this lecture is presented to the platform of pharmacology notes and the topic is delivered by registered pharmacist Mera Shaheen, the gold medalist. Today our topic is adrenergic receptor and the bonus in all those drugs which act on adrenergic receptors and block that receptors. Today we will specifically discuss about non-selective beta blockers. Beta blockers are clinically competitive antagonists. They may act non-selectively or selective. As a non-selective beta blockers, they will act on beta 1 and beta 2 receptors and they have affinity for both receptors equally. While the beta blockers which are selective, they will specifically act on beta 1 receptor. The drugs which act on beta 2 receptors are not used clinically, so we will not discuss it here. The beta blockers decreases blood pressure, but it does not cause orthostatic hypotension. As orthostatic hypotension is not caused because alpha 1 or alpha receptors remain functional, only the beta receptors are blocked. Thus, these beta blockers are used in case of arrhythmia, in case of congestive heart failure, glaucoma. So, we will discuss specifically the non-selective beta blockers today. Usually, the beta blockers have suffix in their name. The suffix is olol. And the non-selective drugs of beta blockers include pro- Prenolol. This old olol that is a suffix for beta blockers and timolol. Nadolol. So the drugs included in non-selective beta blocker are propranolol, timolol, and nadolol. These drugs act on beta 1 and beta 2 receptors non selectively and have equal affinity. Today, the first, in the first term, we will discuss about the propranolol, that how the propranolol is effective beta blocker. So, the drug is propranolol. Propranolol. A non selective beta blocker and competitive antagonist have equal affinity for beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. Means it acts equally on beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. Now let's see that what actions are produced by propranolol. Now the actions. The actions produced by propranolol, we will start with cardiovascular system, means on a heart, how it takes on cardiovascular system. So in cardiovascular system, it decreases cardiac output, it causes negative chronotropic action, it causes negative inotropic action, it suppresses this or depresses SA node and AV node. So SA node, AV node is blocked, decreased cardiac output, in negative chronotropic action, negative inotropic action, and SA and AV node are blocked. Now how this happens? Now let's see that it is a heart. This is atria, ventricles. In this atria and ventricles, now there is present SA node here. Yes, the node present here is SA node. The node present here is AV node, bundle of S, quick NG fibers, and the one thing that is myocardium, this line that is myocardium. Now, the drugs propranolol will act on these receptors. Now, which receptors are present here? The most prominent receptors which are present on SA node, AV node, myocardium, these are beta 1. Mm. Beta 1 receptors. Usually what happens then when catecholamines are released? Catecholamines, 
means epinephrine and norepinephrine they come and act on beta receptors increase the pacemaker activity of sinoatrial node thus increases the heart rate this is termed as chronotropic action positive chronotropic action when it acts on av node it produces dromotropic action while when it acts on myocardium it cause increase in contractility of the heart and this increased contractility is termed as positive inotropic action this was the action produced by catecholamines now beta blockers means propranolol Propranolol will come and act on these receptors and block this receptor, so does not allow automaticity and the pacemaker activity of sinoatrial node. Thus decreases heart rate. This will decrease heart rate, so we call it as negative chronotropic action. And when it acts, this propranolol when act on myocardium it causes decreased contractility of heart so decreased contractility will cause negative inotropic action as we said propranolol is responsible to cause negative chronotropic action negative inotropic action it suppresses se node and it suppresses av node then then it, as we said that propranolol decreases cardiac output it decreases cardiac output. So cardiac output is equal to heart rate into stroke volume. Heart rate into stroke volume. What is heart rate? Heart rate is how many times heart pumps the blood in one second and stroke volume is the volume ejected in a one pump. So that is termed as stroke volume. Procurinol decreases cardiac output. And cardiac output decreases when heart rate decreases and stroke volume decreases. Heart rate is decreased due to the blockage of SA node and as stroke volume is decreased due to the blockage of the beta receptors at myocardium. So decrease in heart rate, decrease in stroke volume, thus decreases cardiac output. That's why it can be used in myocardial infections or it can be used in cardiac arrhythmias. This was the first action on cardiovascular system that on a heart it decreases cardiac output and stroke volume and the second one is vasoconstriction. Usually uh, beta 2 receptors are responsible for vasodilation. All beta 2 receptors cause vasodilation and when these receptors will be blocked, so opposite to this occurs that is vasoconstriction. Now we have the circulatory system and circulatory system supplies to many organs like to the GIT, to the skin or skeletal muscles. But in the case of propranolol, what the propranolol will do, it will decrease the blood supply to that organ. Due to the vasoconstriction, the blood supply to paraphrase is decreased. The blood supply to juxta glomerular apparatus is decreased. It is in decrease to GIT system, it is decreased to the skin, it is also decreased in the case of skeletal muscles. So in the peripheral system, decreased blood supply happens due to the propranolol, lot and this is just due to the blockage of beta 2 receptors. So it on heart, it depresses SA node, AV node, block SA node, then cause a decreased heart rate. It causes negative chronotropic action and by blocking the myocardium, it's called negative inotropic action. On peripheries, it decreases the blood to the peripheries and then it also causes bronchoconstriction. Another function is bronchoconstriction. How it happens that how this bronchoconstriction happens? We have bronchi, bronchioles. Alveoli here, this bronchiole, how it look like? If we see a cross section, the cross section of it, this is bronchiole. This bronchiole will be having smooth muscles here. Here are smooth muscles present, and on these smooth muscles, there is beta 2 receptor. There is beta 2 receptors. So when the propranol is given to a patient and it will act on beta 2 receptors, it will cause vasoconstriction by these smooth muscles. So there will be vasoconstriction in the bronchial system. So bronchoconstriction will be the result of this. 
then sodium retention it causes sodium retention as we said that blood supply to kidney is decreased dextroglomerular apparatus is decreased so sodium is retained with the fluid in the body and the next action is disturbance in glucose metabolism glucose metabolism is disturbed in the case of propranolol so we'll discuss about the glucose metabolism in the next lecture so stay with us and watch the next video